and they might say something scary now, but it makes a lot of sense to learn first a framework and then the language. To answer the question if we need a JavaScript framework, we must write down all things that we need to create a JavaScript application. And the first point here that we need is transpiler. Why we need it? Because actually we want our JavaScript code to be run efficiently and smoothly in all browsers. And actually modern JavaScript is not supported in all browsers, which means we are using transpiler to make sure that our code will work in all browsers. And the most popular transpiler that exists is called Babel. The second thing that we need here is routing. Why? Because actually we have lots of pages in our application. And actually JavaScript single page application is not just an application with routing. We have a simple index.html where we render our JavaScript and then we are handling all our routes with JavaScript. So we are going to the URL slash foo for example and there we are just rendering with plain JavaScript foo page. Then we are jumping to slash bar and we are rendering with JavaScript bar page there, which actually means we don't have different pages, we simply use JavaScript and routing inside JavaScript to handle different content for different pages. So we simply remove the content of HTML with JavaScript and we render the new content, which means we need a library for that or we need to implement it on our own. And actually it's not the easy topic you need to handle, URLs, dynamic params, routing, clicking backwards, forwards and much much more. The next important thing is architecture, so we need to plan how we will structure our folders, the whole project, how we will split our entities, will we have something like controllers, routes, maybe components that we want to reuse and much much more. If you are not an experienced developer, it's really difficult to plan your application correctly. One more problem that in JavaScript we are making lots of small manipulations with DOM. So here for example we updated a disable button and there we updated the counter with notifications. Which actually means every single time we are changing the DOM and it is not fast. And actually the modern way to solve this problem is just to re-render the whole application when our state or our data changes. And this is really not efficient from the performance side, this is why we have a thing which is called virtual DOM. Actually this is the JavaScript representation of real DOM and it is much easier to calculate the difference and find what we need to update in the real DOM inside virtual DOM. So actually we calculate the differences and only apply them to the real DOM when needed. So we also need here an additional library or implement the virtual DOM on ourselves. We also need some kind of state management inside our JavaScript application. Because we want to store lots of data in client, different states, for example we want to share the amount of items that we have in basket. And we also want to store the list of products on some other page. And here we have loading state and maybe on another page we have the error page. We want to store and manage all these states efficiently. So here is the answer, you can't create medium or big applications without a framework, because all this stuff that I talked about before is inside framework out of the box, so you need to do zero code and you are getting all this stuff for yourself. So you can really focus just on writing code which is specific to your project. In other case you will build a framework on your own and support it and then later you will build your project. Of course, if you have like 30 or 50 lines of JavaScript code at all, you don't need any framework. It is completely fine to use just vanilla JavaScript here. When people start to learn a language, they really try to master everything that is possible inside this language. So they really solve some practical tasks in this language alone without any frameworks. And they are solving some not real tasks like for example finding the Fibonacci number or maybe palindromes. And I might say something scary here, but it is completely fine to start learning with framework and not with language itself. And of course you need to learn some basics of any language, but not really a lot. Because in your everyday life at work you will use just a framework. Sure you need to master language also at some point, but not from the beginning. What you need to do is start with tasks that you will have in real work. Also with using a framework you will see your results faster, because framework does a lot of heavy lifting for you. 
Also, if you want to know what framework is better to pick, then go and check this video also.